Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on with y'all? Listen, right? I, uh, I, uh, I'm happy that the weekend is, uh, is finally here because the weekend, I don't have to work Saturday and Sunday, and it's like I be doing so much stuff behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. Everybody want to be a CEO, but everybody don't want to do the work it take and don't want to miss the amount of stuff they got to miss in order to be CEO. Somebody got to do it. But, like I would say, today, because I'm not going to be with y'all until uh, Monday, I mean, you got Sunday inspiration and motivation. That that existed before Deli Bread. So it's like, you know, I finally found the groove. I mean, that can, can like take care of everything at one time. And then I didn't want to be one of those people who make a video once a week. Because, like I try to explain to people, YouTube taught black people to worry about views. And nobody understand what it's like to have a catalog. Like when I go to meet people to do motivational speeches, I send them links to YouTube for them to watch on the specific subject that I talked about. My catalog is YouTube. I don't like, unless you got like 50,000, like we had on the reality show, uh, unless you got like a million you, you're not going to be able to live off YouTube, first of all. You know, you get monetized on Facebook, Instagram. You know, no matter how much or how long it takes, you know, you got to check. I monetize on all platforms. So it's like, no matter what, I will get a check. But depending on that check to take care of myself, is it's like frivolous. But I do have like 1,000 and certain videos. So it's like... Any subject somebody could come up with that want me to speak on, I could just send them the link to YouTube for that specific video. You get it? It's like free business cards. So, yeah, I, I don't use the internet for the same purposes people use the internet for. You know, I, I also know how it affects your relationship when y'all start selling merchandise and y'all start getting checks and it's like money will always fuck relationships up it's just a common denominator it's just you know women want you to get shared bank accounts but they want to keep their own little separate one that they had and men don't want to necessarily be in a position to get fucked over like they did in the past. So it's like, I think we need to keep our shit separate. You know, so anytime you add money into a subject, it's always, if that shit ain't built on no strong foundation, it's always going to fail. Eventually, it's going to become a problem. Now, what does that have to do with anything that I am talking about. First of all, you don't know what I'm talking about. My subject for the day is keeping up with the Joneses. Keeping up with the Joneses. Uh, I was a young chap and I lived on 15th and Master. I hung on 17th with Jefferson. That's where I was at. Or 15th and Styles, 16th and Styles. 1800, 1900. And it's like me. It's like me just going to school. I would walk past and see my brothers out there. And disclaimer I'm not talking about any illegal activity. I'm talking about seeing people and the way they're dressed. Disclaimer. I am not a rat. I do not do that. I don't even dry snitch. So I want to make sure people understand that I am talking about 
the way a person looked. And back in the day, people stood outside, especially in Philly, New Jersey, they don't do that. Nobody be outside. But in Philly, there's motherfuckers outside right now. So, when I used to go to school and walk past and see my brother out there, I used to see T.Y. out there, I see Nash out there. You know, I used to be like, yo, I want to look like them dudes. And I know a lot of people might think that they got their swag and everything from their own self. You're lying. But it's okay. I mean, it's Friday. I really don't care. Like, I, I'm in a not caring mood. So, whatever. You can lie to yourself. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. I've seen other people with swags. And, and it's like, it started to transfer over into my life. Because I'm an athlete at this time. You know, athletes don't got no goddamn money when they first start off. It's like, I'm wearing the shit the coach gave me. He gave me like eight pairs of sneakers. I'm sitting on them, but I ain't got Jordans, though. I ain't got, you know, Diesel. You know, my my god brother Tupac from from 17th and Jefferson and, and, and Craig and shit. You know, Day Day was out there. Them niggas duck and all of them. Them niggas used to have, like, motherfucking... They used to go to Missouri's. I remember the first time I went there, but they used to go to Missouri's and get the Moschino t-shirts that cost $500 and iceberg sweatpants and shit. I'm like, mm. And I remember the first time I went to my mom and told her. Now, now I got, like, eight boxes of shoes upstairs because, like, colleges are sending me everything. Right? I said, Mom, I want a pair of chores. She gave me this look. She gave me this look that was like, <laughs> if you don't get the fuck it, and she don't cuss, right? But thank God she don't cuss because she probably wanted to cuss at me that day. Because like, you had to go through my mom, then my mom taking my dad, then it happened. And then we would get allowance every week, so it's like, nigga, why you ain't buying your own shit? I get it now. It's like, I can't. I get it now. Like, nigga, buy your own shit. Your money is my money anyway. So, it's like, buy your own shit. But, back to the subject. I remember asking her, like, I want a pair of Jordans. I want to look nice like everybody else. And then Easter was coming up, and, and like, my dumb ass didn't even understand that my dad spent more money on our suits than anybody spent on a fucking T.Y. sweatsuit and some Nikes. I'm stupid. Did not know <laughs> that when I went up there and did this to this man and he measured me all over, I was actually getting a telemade suit. You know how much a telemade suit costs? My dad was buying one of us, all of us. <coughs> and it was like six of us. He buying everybody dresses and gowns and my mom would take care of that part and he take us to the part down knife and market, eighth and market. And he let the boy sit up there. It was his boy, too, because that's where he's going to get his suits tailored at all the time. We get a telemove, telemade, triple threat. <laughs> I'm a child. Give me a break. I did not know. People would bust on me like, yo, y'all niggas got suits on you. I bet y'all going to church. Once again, not a bad thing. But... I was trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm keeping it light. Later on in my life, once I got injured, I was in California. They had to, they shipped all of my stuff home. And they told me, basically, you know, they told me what they told me. That's just too much information. And I had to make a decision. Go against everything that I believed in or take the consequences for what we did. We. I didn't do it by myself. I was not that smart at the time. And I took my consequences. But when I came home, I started seeing my homies. Like, Shit, my little, my two little brothers right now, both got German shit. And they my little brothers. They both got German shit. So it's like, 
you can get caught up in doing the one mistake that you should not do. The next four minutes, three minutes, I'll explain to you. It's called me versus me. That's the only thing that you should be doing. Any me versus anything else. Me versus the Joneses. Me versus the dude down the street. Me versus my sister. Me versus my brother. Me versus the only versus that you should be fucking having is me versus me. And I am proud to be the first one to say, I do it week by week. Are you a better person than you was last week? Okay, so add three of those weeks up. You should be an extraordinary better person. I'm telling you, it takes some hard, fearless, and moral inventory for you to be able to do this. It's not easy. I say, hell yeah. You was a, hmm. Compared to who you are right now, I can't even stand you a month ago. What, nigga? A couple of these months and you might not even recognize yourself. Because every moment I wake up is me versus me. I don't give a fuck whether you don't like me, whether the person I'm with don't like me, whether the person that I'm going to marry don't like me, whether the person, whether my mother don't like me, I don't give a fuck anymore. Because when I was deep in depression, ready to kill myself, wasn't nobody to fuck with me but me. I am the only person that could have saved me. So now, I be in a situation where I don't need no saviors. I don't need nothing. All I need to be is better than I was last week. And in order for you ever meet somebody who never do nothing wrong? Never. No, I'm talking about never. There's always a reason why they behave and think and do the shit that they do. Mm. That's not me. God bless those people. Those type of people going to wake up in hell and blame God for being a bad person. Like, God, you knew. No, no, it's too late to blame God now. You knew you wasn't shit and you ain't trying to fix it. You know? So at least I'm in a position in my life where I'm trying to fix me. I ain't looking for nobody else to do it. If God sent me somebody else to comfort me while I'm doing it, fine. But I need to self fix myself is me versus me and when you in a situation where it's me versus me then you get to see those very things that very few people pay attention to you get to see the blessing, you get to see the miracle, you get to see the passive aggressiveness of your miracle, you get to see the possibility of the reality that you could not have did this by yourself, always relieving. So, next time you walking down the street or you got to catch the bus or you inside your car and there's another car that pull up on you or there's a car that pull up on your bus stop or your girlfriend just bought a car or your, your homie just bought a car or, you know, it's got a new job or whatever. Remind yourself of where you were at before you compare yourself to where they are at. Once again, it's your boy, the cop ball, as usual. It's the last day. I'm going to miss y'all guys, man. I want y'all to have some fun. Enjoy yourself this weekend. Like always. 
if you are miserable and you find yourself in misery and you know said thing that which makes you miserable and you do not remove said thing that makes you miserable you are no longer a victim you're a participant when you wake up in the morning look at yourself in the mirror and say that i'm beautiful i am special i deserve to be happy the top of one